Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning message. I hope this finds all of you doing well, and gentlemen, happy Father's Day to you. We appreciate uh, you uh, joining with us today. Uh, always, those of you who come and listen to the YouTube videos weekly, we appreciate that very, very much. But again, uh, happy Father's Day to you guys out there. Wonderful day, uh, a good day, uh, a blessed day uh, for us who have uh, been able to be dads. It's a, a wonderful, a wonderful existence to have children and all. But uh, we remember our dads today. I remember mine. Uh, he's been gone about nine years now in heaven now. Uh, but we, uh, but we remember him and his goodness to us as well. Uh, I want to read a little illustration to you. And by the way, if you hear something. Uh, uh, a little bit uh, different this morning. There's a woodpecker back here in the woods behind. He's working hard, so maybe that won't disturb things too much. But that's what's banging around back here behind me. But, uh, but anyway, thank you for being with us today. I really do appreciate you. Asking questions is the key to learning. We all know that. We should never be too proud to ask a question, should we? None of us. Even, no, no matter how old we get, we should ask questions. A father and son went fishing one day. Uh, after a couple hours out in the boat, the, the boy suddenly became curious about the world around him. He asked his father, how, how does this boat float? And the father thought for a moment, and then he replied, well, I don't rightly know, son. The boy returned to his contemplation, then turned back to his father, well, how, how do fish breathe underwater? Once again, the father re replied, well, I don't rightly know, son. A little later, the boy asked his father why the sky was blue. Again, the father replied, I don't rightly know. Worried he was going to annoy his father, he says, Dad, do you mind my asking you all these questions? And he said, of course not, son. If you don't ask questions, you'll never learn anything. <laughs> Children have a lot of questions about life in general and other very important matters as well, don't they? And we need to be ready to answer, don't we? Certainly we do. Uh, on three separate occasions in Scripture, God told parents in Israel how to answer the serious questions of their sons and daughters. Uh, if you have your Bible there with you, I hope you do, you can turn to Exodus chapter 13 for a moment, and then we'll be looking at Deuteronomy 6.20 and then down to Joshua 4, 6, and 21. And we're gonna show you these three occasions that God told the parents, the Jewish people of Israel, how to answer the questions, serious questions about life uh, that their sons and daughters may have. Exodus 13, 14 says, and it shall be when the, thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what is this, that thou shalt say unto him, by strength of hand, of uh, the Lord brought us up out of Egypt from the house of bondage. And then in Deuteronomy 6, 20, we find these words. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? And then in Joshua 4, 6, and 21, that this may be a sign among you that when your children, uh, children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? And he spake unto his children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Well, now, do you know the answers to those, being Christians and Bible scholars like you are? Well, so how were those fathers to answer these questions about the stones that were in the, uh, the riverbed? Well, they'd answer that, the, that these 12 stones picked up from the riverbed became a memorial to God's faithfulness. That's what God wanted them to teach the children. That's why in his word, he said to be ready to give an answer. They were set up at Gilgal, which was our people's first campsite in the invaded land. Placing these 12 stones in the riverbed itself commemorates the place in the river that God dried up, up the river where his ark had been held, the ark of the covenant, and where he showed by a miracle his mighty presence and worthiness of respect. That was the answer. 
And you say, well, why is that important here on Father's Day? Fathers, mothers as well, we need to be ready to give answers to our children about the important, serious uh, questions they may come up with about spiritual things. That's the most important thing in their life. We may be able to answer questions about, about things around the house, about sports, about all kinds of things. But can we answer questions pertaining to spiritual things? That's what the message is about this morning. <clears throat> this would indicate that God wants us to take time to answer our children when they ask us about spiritual matters. This example that I've read to you about the questions that would arise about the 12 stones in the riverbed and what they commemorated. So God wants us to be able to answer questions as well. How we respond to those questions can either greatly help or terribly discourage them in their present life and their searching for the Lord in the future. We need to be ready to answer, don't we? Challenging questions arise uh, when we think on this matter. Do we allow our own interests, a TV program, a sporting event, a hobby, uh, to keep us from taking time to listen and instruct our children or anyone uh, else who may ask us about God for that matter? If we can simply pause long enough to explain his truth, he'll use it to change the life, lives of our kids and other people as well. Do we know the answers to spiritual questions? It's been said, <clears throat> do all that, do all the good you can in all the ways you can for all the people you can while you can. Certainly this applies to the life of a father, of a dad. I'm going to read that to you again. Do all the good you can in all the ways you can for all the people you can while you can. Certainly that takes in your family and your children. It applies to life as a father. That's why as dads and moms, we must be busy about collecting truths from God's word to be ready to give answers as our children grow and mature and ask these questions. That's why as your pastor, I need to do everything I can to promote teaching our young people the ways of the Lord while I can. That's why we as a church family must do all we can to instill the truths and values taught in the Bible so that our children can have assurance of eternal life in heaven and be strong in leading their generation and generations to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Praise God for the three little ones who came and were saved during vacation Bible school, but also the rest that came and learned the answers to the important questions of life and the Word of God. We must be willing to do all we can to have answers to the questions our children will most assuredly have for us concerning life, death, and spiritual things. Are we equipped? That's the question that arises for us today. Are we equipped to answer questions that our children or grandchildren or the children here at the church might have for us concerning spiritual matters? This is an issue we need to address and be ready for those questions, and in that readiness, hopefully lead young souls to Christ. The children that, that received Christ had questions, and praise the Lord, we were able to answer their questions. I'm sure everyone in this building or there listening during YouTube today, I'm sure everyone today understands the fact that kids are full of questions. When our grandsons come over, we better be ready to answer a lot of questions. Now, the older ones are, are maturing, and they're, they're not hardly as full of questions as the little ones are. But we need to understand that. As their grandfather, am I ready to give good, solid answers when those questions concerning spiritual matters start to be asked? Dads, are you, as the spiritual leader of your family, ready to talk with little Sally or little Bobby when, when they're concerned about the subject of death and what happens after they die. Please don't let them go away wondering because you gave them an answer like, well, well, you don't have to worry about that right now or, or you're too young to understand. Friends, if, if they have a question, if they ask the question, they need an answer and dad and mom need to be ready 
to give them one. Of course we do. And of course, it's no new news where we are to go to find the answers to those questions. It's the knowledge of the Word of God is the key. If you have your Bible still there with you in Psalm 119, I'm going to pick up with verse 9 and read a few verses here. And I want you to listen to what the Bible says. Verse 9, Psalm 119, beginning. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart. Listen, David said, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect into thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. The Bible offers instruction for all of life's questions. I'd like for us to, to look briefly at three different subjects God's Word answers very clearly, and in that, we, we can have those answers when these questions are asked by our children and to questions from anyone else for that matter. Number one, the Bible has the answers to questions concerning right and wrong. Again, Psalm 119.11 said, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Why do we hide God's word in our heart? Because it tells us right from wrong. Think about it. Proverbs 6.23, we studied this on Wednesday night a few weeks ago. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is, the li is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. In Colossians 3, we clearly see the answer to the question of what sin, what wrong is. Colossians 3, 8 and 9. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. So the Bible instructs us right from wrong. Let me ask you. Do kids have a temper? Sure they do. Can they get angry and say bad things? Sure they can. Do they have instruction from God's word in this matter? Certainly they do. Have you ever literally got the Bible and, and read this to them? Have you ever explained on their level that God expects us not to get so mad and to say ugly things about other people? Have you shown them in the word of God? Have you ever got the Bible down and read them that we are not to lie to one another? Have you shown them in God's Word? Dear church, listen, please understand this morning there is power in the Word of God for correction. It tells us right from wrong. You know, it's one thing to say to a child, if you don't stop that, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put you in time out or I'm going to wear you out. But it's another thing, listen, get this, get this thought in your mind. It's another thing to open God's word and show that kid that he will be accountable to God for his actions. That speaks loudly. Will it immediately fix the problem? Probably not. But the seed of God's expectations has been planted. And be consistent in regularly giving answers from the Bible. And oh yeah, if we're going to use scripture to correct our kids, we'd better be living by his teachings also. Your little boy or girl may ask, Daddy, didn't you read from the Bible that filthy communication shouldn't come from your mouth? Also, in that same chapter of Colossians, we find the answers to what is not only wrong, but right. Look on down the page in Colossians 3, 12, and 15. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all things, put on charity, which is love, of course, which is the bond of perfectness or maturity. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. You see, when 
our children have questions concerning right and wrong, we can find the answers in God's word, can't we? No doubt about it. Number two, the Bible also has the answers to questions concerning personal peace with God. The Apostle Paul knew what it was to have peace with God. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7, we find these instructions. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We need to bring up our children understanding that peace with God comes through faith in Jesus Christ who keeps our hearts and our minds. When questions concerning our relationship with God arise, we need to teach them that, that, we, that we are not to be so careful about the things of this world, for the world seeks to keep us looking to it for peace. But we need to teach them that satisfying the flesh will not bring us peace with God. That is so important to be separate from the things of the world to find peace with God. And the Bible, number three, has the answer to salvation, has the answer to what happens to me after I die. The Bible tells us that we've all sinned, Romans 3.23. We know it all, all of us know it well. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one of us, not proud of that fact, I know you're not, but we are sinners. The Bible tells us that all are condemned because of our sin. John 3.18 tells us that he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So the question may arise from a young one or old person alike, what can I do about the sin that's in my life? What can I do about the penalty for that sin? The Bible has the answer. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is the answer. It's Father's Day today and men, we are to be the spiritual leaders of our home. Do you have the answers to the questions that your family may have, your children in particularly? You know, even after... They're all grown up questions about spiritual things still come up. Are we equipping ourselves by studying God's word to be able to help our grown children find answers to life's questions as well? You may say that my kid won't listen to a thing I say. Well, that may be true. But one day that may change and the time will come that, that they are open to getting answers. Will we be ready to give godly counsel in the matters they ask about? Dads, have you set the example for your children to follow by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior and allowed Him to be the Lord of your life? That's the first step we must take in helping our kids find the answers to life's questions. Christian dad, do, do, do your children see you in the Bible searching for the knowledge of spiritual things and then sharing it with them? Do they see you on your knees before holy God? Always be aware. This is wise counsel. Whatever the child sees daddy do, he'll want to do it too. The ABCs of being a father. A, always trust them to God's care. B, bring them to church, not send them. Bring them. C, challenge them to high goals. D, delight in their achievements. E, exalt the Lord in their presence. F, frown on evil. G, give them love. H, hear their problems. I, ignore not their childish fears. J, joyfully accept their apologies. K, keep their confidence. L, live a good example before them. M, make them your friends. N, never ignore their endless questions. O, open your home to their visits. P, pray for them by name. Q, quicken your interest in, spirit, in their spirituality. R, remember their needs. S, show them the way of salvation. T, teach them to work 
you understand they are still young. V, verify your statements. W, wean them from bad company. X, expect them to obey. Y, yearn for God's best for them. And Z, zealously guide them in biblical truth. Men and moms alike today, dads and moms, if we'll stick to that list, we'll have success as a parent. Gentlemen, happy Father's Day to you. We love and appreciate you. It's not easy being a dad, but it's easier when we have the guidance of our Heavenly Father helping us, isn't it? I would encourage you to be in God's Word, finding the answers to our children's questions and allowing them to see your spirituality, what a difference it can make in their lives. Happy Father's Day. God bless each of you until we speak again.